let's take a look at what happened in last night's Rockets game. Alper and Shangun had zero points at halftime. Zero. But in the second half, he had a lot. He went off. And this play that Shangun pulled off last night, he looked like he was Dirk Nowitzki out there. Jab step. Crossover. Back down. Spin. Whirl. Fade away. Good call by Ryan Hollins there with the appropriate yeah. too. Because I appropriate. was having the same the same thoughts uh sitting on my couch. Well, at Chili's, my friends, Brad, Kyle, and me, got up, made so much noise, and everyone was like, What the what's going on? This is a family restaurant. Do they have their mortgage around this game? <laughs> I know, right? Like these degenerates gamble on the game. But Shangun played so well, and he's clearly the best player on the Rockets. And I'm not a subscriber that every single time at the end of a game, a team needs to give the ball to its best player. I.e., take a look at what Chicago did at the end of regulation last night where they gave the ball to DeMar DeRozan, who just dribbled out the shot clock and then took a, I thought, like a mediocre fadeaway look at the buzzer and, and he missed it. That's just DeMar DeRozan. He ma- he makes them, he misses them. And that's also, Sean, just basketball where th- there's a lot of possessions that end up like that. Yeah, especially with the game tied. It's right. like, I, we don't need to try to run a play, try all this passing and then turn the ball over. Like, let's just, if we miss, it's overtime. If we make it, we win. All that said, Sean, Alper and Shingoon in the second half of last night's game, and in overtime, he scored all 25 of his points. 25. He was on fire. And after that jumper, you would think, oh, the Rockets just got to keep feeding him and let him win the game. He's clearly just cooking. But then their very next possession, Shangun gets trapped outside of the key, and he had to give it up. There's like four or five seconds left on the shot clock. He, he had nothing to do with the ball. So he passes it to a wide-open Cam Whitmore who's outside the three-point line, who for whatever reason dribbles to his right and inside the three-point line and takes the longest two possible. Old-school basketball, baby. Right. Now, he's a rookie, so yeah. okay, maybe maybe you look the other way on that. But then the very next possession, Jalen Green decides, I'm the best player on the team, and goes one-on-four, dribbling through the lane against uh, Zach Levine at, at the rim, ultimately. And Zach Levine's bigger than him. So guess what? He misses the layup. And all it took was that brief little moment for the Bulls to take the game, take the lead, take all the momentum. Yeah, and, the Bulls just basically after each one of these misses, just bomb a three. Maybe. Right. And and they and they would make it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, the worst would have been if Alex Caruso also made the wide open three that he took. Like that's the thing. The, the Rockets all of a sudden gave up some wide open looks. Yeah. So look, they're a young team. This is not like this is this is not me having a meltdown over what happened. I, I just hope this is a learning experience for them going forward that you got to give it to Shangun when he's hot. He is the best player on your team, and if that creates shots for other guys, great. It did create one for Cam Whitmore there. He took a bad one, and then Jalen Green did Jalen Green stuff. And, I mean, we're starting to run out of time with Jalen Green. Last night was one of those moments where just that one specific moment pissed me off with Green. It, it, it actually made me angry. It's one moment. I'm not talking about the totality of the game. Like, he was a disaster the whole game, but he was 8 of 19. I'm, I'm just looking at that moment. It was Shengun's time right there, and Jalen Green took it away from him. So, just something to keep in mind going forward. I hope the Rockets learn from it.